I? Give me a C. Okay, that's actually all I need. <laughs> hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 509 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Yes, we're talking about ICs today, the trends around them, how we can test them, and why automation for 2D and 3D IC design for test is the way of the future. Also, a little later on, I investigate a unique new semiconductor material that is being called the best of all time. But first, please welcome Nindya Nirkundar from Siemens to chat all about IC design for test and the new Tessent multi-die software solution. All right, let's go. Hi, Vidya. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, let's start with a big question. What are some of the trends you're seeing as growth in the IC industry today? The IC industry has been steadily growing in the past several years, and it's at a point where in the past where they put a lot of things into the chip and they called it system on chip, and now they are up to a point where they cannot expand anymore because of things that they have already reached the limit. And so they are going sideways and vertical in terms of direction. And so they want to be able to communicate to another chip and treat it as if it's in the same package. So they call it system and package. And they are also going vertical in a 3D stack and they're calling it 3D. And you combine the two. The first one is 2.5D. The second one is 3D. And you combine the two, then you get 5.5D. So the industry is trending and growing in this direction of 2.5D, 3D, 5.5D because the 2D, the two-dimensional, has reached its limit. That makes sense. Now, let's talk about challenges here in particular. What challenges do you see these kinds of ICs facing in terms of testing? So if you take 2D, which is two-dimensional, the chip integrator takes cores that can be designed within the company or IPs that they are being bought, and they need to integrate it to form the chip and test it. And now you're talking about multiple chips, dies, or chiplets that they are together forming this 2.5D and 3D. And so what type of DFT architecture do you use in these different chiplets that you need to integrate is the big challenge that we have for the testing industry. That absolutely makes sense. Now, Vidya, what is unique or different about Tessent Multi-Die in particular? Tessent Multi-Die is a new product that Tessent product family has introduced. And in this product, we are targeting an expansion in automation from knowings and learnings from 2D, which we know best, and applying it in the 2.5D and 3D environment and space. And so the Tessent multi-die allows you to have standards that you were used to in the past, still keep them in the 3D device, plus adhere to new standards like IEEE 1838, that only gives you the standard of the primary test taxes or the secondary test taxes, the serial mechanism, or the optional flexible parallel port, but it doesn't give you the tools to automate it. And that's what the test and multi-die is doing for you, along with creating the interconnect test between the chiplets or dies, which without the interconnect test, you're not going to be able to see if these dies or chiplets can communicate with each other effectively. Vidya, how does using Tessent multi-die improve productivity? So if you have 100 steps that you need to do and everything manual, imagine a failure occurring in any one of those steps. You're going to lose downtime. Your production is going to be impacted. But if you automate all of those 100 steps in an orderly fashion, that's where your productivity is going to be improved. And that's exactly what Tessent Multi-Die is doing. It's automating any of the steps that you need for design for test. And it's also making sure that to adhere to standards and so the productivity is at its max. 
Okay, so let's talk about the Tessent Streaming Scan Network or SSN. Would this be a good fit for FPP or flexible parallel port? Yes, the uh, streaming scan network that Tessent Products introduced two years ago, it's packetized test data. So it is independent of how you design or develop your core, and you extend that into how you design and develop your chip or chiplet or die that can be put together in the system and package or in the 3D or in the 2.5D devices, then you are able to connect the SSN bus between the dies, and that's your flexible parallel port. Even though the standard says it's optional, the IEEE 1838 standard, all of our customers that we have engaged with in the 2.5D, 3D, 5.5D space They all want this flexible parallel port to be implemented, and SSN is an ideal fit for it. Okay, so why does Siemens think Tessent Multi-Die is perfect for the market right now? So as you know, the industry is expanding quite significantly from 2D environment to a 2.5D, 3D, and 5.5D space. We've scoped the market We've looked to see what problem areas there are in the market. And from what we understand, the lack in automation, what trends the market is going towards, we looked at pain points of the market and what is easier for a customer to adopt. And so with the test and multi-die, we think that this is what the industry needs in order to solve all the bumps in the road that you get towards designing and implementing the 2.5D, 3D, 5.5D devices. Plus, whatever we have learned from 2D is applied in this. We have integrated tightly with our other testing products, which you would need for memory-based or any other logic testing, including compression. And so this is the right product at the right time for the market now. Excellent. All right, Vidya, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show before, you get our standard off the cuff right now. So, Vidya, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, the restaurant's closed, what would you have? I would really like to try Jamaican curry goat. Ooh, I love that answer. Why Jamaica curry goat? I've never tried it in Jamaica. I'm like waiting to get a chance to go out there and give that a try. I love it. I can attest it's very good, but I have never actually had it in Jamaica. One of my best friends is Jamaican, so it is delicious. I imagine it's even better on the beach. (laughs) True. Excellent. Well, Vidya, this has been great. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Amelia. Could we have found the best semiconductor material of all time? And you may not know its name. Let me introduce you to cubic boron arsenide. Now, we all know that silicon is great. No one's talking bad about you, silicon, I swear. (laughs) But this cubic boron arsenide, well, this may flip the script when it comes to the semiconductor industry. So we all know that silicon lets electrons move through its structure easily, but it's not that great when it comes to being accommodating to holes, electrons' positively charged counterparts. And silicon is also not that great when it comes to heat conduction either. But cubic boron arsenide actually improves on both of these issues. Not only can it provide high mobility to both holes and electrons, but it also has fantastic thermal conductivity. So, a team from MIT, the University of Houston, the University of Texas at Austin, and Boston College found that cubic boron arsenide has the third best thermal conductivity in the world. MIT postdoc Zheng Wu Xin, lead author of the associated research paper about this new material, says this, Heat is now a major bottleneck for many electronics. Silicon carbide is replacing silicon for power electronics in major EV industries, including Tesla. Since it has three times higher thermal conductivity than silicon, despite its lower electrical mobilities. 
Imagine what boron arsenides can achieve with 10 times higher thermal conductivity and much higher mobility than silicon. It can be a game changer. And importantly, it was the use of MIT's ultra-fast laser grading systems that gave this team the ability to demonstrate the material's high mobility for electrons and holes alike. But is cubic boron arsenide ready for prime time? Absolutely not. <laughs> so far, this arsenide has been tested only in small batches. So first, this team needs to figure out how to, in a practical manner, make this new material in usable quantities. And right now, this team is currently making only very non-uniform material. So they need to produce enough uniform material in order to test it and get reliable data from it. And from there, there are also issues that surround production and purification of this material as well. Considering how pure silicon is, this might be a big challenge. So we'll just have to wait and see. Above all else, though, it does seem like this team is hopeful for cubic boron arsenide and the potential of it making its way into the semiconductor industry. So if you want even more information about cubic boron arsenide and this research study, I've included a couple links in the YouTube description and on the landing page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me and a selection of fish fry podcasts as well. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. I'm just saying. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review and five stars on that podcasting platform of your choice. Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of December 2nd, 2022, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>